Y254. Imagine. Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. Now before we went on our break, we were talking about how can we better understand our mental health issues, what is the root cause and how can we address it from the root such that we deal with every other matter that can sprout from it. And joining me live on set is Namrata Shah, who is an expert on mental health issues, particularly in children and the youth. So we were just discussing about the boy child and how they haven't felt like there's a safe space for them to express. But there's also the aspect of the ego and the perception of men should be providers and men should be like this and men shouldn't express themselves. How can we deal with that such that men are allowed to be vulnerable when things are overwhelming to them? I think as a society, we need to be open to men being able to share their emotion, whether it's sadness or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, tears, just a simple thing like crying. You rarely find a man crying, yes or no? That's true. You they rarely cry. They just want to bottle up their emotions yeah. and be like, I'm the man. I don't do this. So just to be, you know, the new generation of parents that are coming up and those that have older kids, to understand that men and the boy child need a safe place to express. And they will only express in that, uh, in that environment. They won't express themselves in an environment which is confrontational, which is, makes them feel like they're not good enough, you know, for what they, they've set themselves out to do. So we have to look at both, the ego and also the emotions. And I think if we try to say, no, the man shouldn't have an ego, it's an impossible thing. <laughs> so, you know, understanding that both are there and the emotions are there and that it's okay in your home if the man expresses or the boy expresses himself, it's perfectly fine. And that way you are creating a healthy emotional environment, you know. And I like that you said that because sometimes even our responses from when they're children, a boy will be crying or doing something and you say, boys don't cry, you know, or girls do this. Boys are not supposed to do that. These are some of the lessons that they carry on yes. till they're the adults and they respond to, you know, I, I don't react like this because boys aren't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. The other day, my cousin shocked me. He, he, he grew a beard. He's younger than me. But he tells me he can't eat like chocolate or ice cream in front of people because men, you know, if I have a beard, how am I just eating chocolate in front <laughs> of people? Which is a toxic ideology. Mm -hmm. And these are ideologies that have been picked up from social media or from the outside world because I don't remember us ever telling people you don't, you know, from yeah. our childhood, there was no lesson like that. Right. So what is the impact of having poor role models or no role models? Because sometimes even the fathers are not present or the fathers are just busy at work and they're rarely at home and the mothers are the only ones who are doing everything. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of lack of proper role models on the boy child as they're growing into men? You know, the role of the father and the mother is both important. The father plays an emotional role for the child too because he provides stability. And the mother is the empath empathet empathetic person in this relationship, you know. She's the one who provides the child with the listening ear, the patience, the trust, the caregiving, the nurturing. So both are important. So I would say to the, you know, to the fathers out there, that your role is very important. Maybe nobody's ever said it. <laughs> and so you do play a role to provide stability emotionally to your child just by validation. For example, if I'm coming into the house one day and I'm very young and I go to my father or my mother, uh, first to my father and I say, hey, look, I've, I've, made, I've just got a new uh, award for painting in my school. And for you, it's like, okay, my child has got an award for painting, but they're looking for validation, you know? So validating that and saying, hey, wow, that's awesome. But you never got that from your father or your mother, so you would maybe not pass it on to your child. You would be, uh, good, you can do better next time, you know, yeah. kind of, <laughs> yeah? So validating that emotion to our child, validating their experiences, builds a healthy communication between you and your child which won't then bridge into a gap later on, you know? 
yeah. and being able to express yourself. So children and youth love to express themselves. The more you try to suppress that, the more problems there'll be at home. Mm. That's what and I've as noticed. as they get older as well. Because uh, most people have this perception that dad is just strict. He's just, once he gets into the house, everyone leaves the sitting room and no one really can communicate. No. And that can carry on to the, the children. Because once, once they see that this is what a man does, even the girl child, they can get a perception that, you know, even when I'm looking for a husband, he has to be this and this way. So it's important, as you're saying, for parents to open up and be free with their children and communicate at the children's level. Yes. So could you expound more on what you do and the work that you've done with the youth and the children? Because you've not just done some work in Kenya, you've gone to different countries. Please expound more on that. So I started uh, in 2017 going into different schools. I started off with one school in Gangwari, in uh, one of the slum areas there, to teach what's known as the Art of Living Children's Program. And in that, we teach uh, breathing uh, processes. It's a technique that allows the child to regulate their emotions. And also confidence building and you know, fun games on learning about your emotions, learning about expressing yourself, learning about how to release traumas. And uh, you know, when I first started, it was very suspicious. Oh, what is this girl going to teach? <laughs> I don't know. So I told the teachers, like, you know, just give me 20 kids, because I did this when I was young. And it helped me so much. I'm now, you know, I'm going into my 20th year of marriage. And, you know, I just wanted everybody to have that opportunity to learn what I have because it helped me in my challenging times, you know. Yeah. So that was the reason I went out there. And when I got there, I, I, I told the teacher, if by day two the kids are not happy, you can, you can call the program off. And I ended up teaching 640 children. <laughs> By the time yeah, you were done. because they noticed such big changes. And when I was asking the kids to write, what are your experiences? And I've shared that too on my profile. Yeah. You can see the colorings. They've done beautiful colorings on, I feel happy. I feel stress-free. You know, I, I see the world in a different way. You know, so all those uh, changes and transformations happen. And just by breathing and I'll tell you why it's breathing and not anything else is because how do you feel when you're angry when you how do you feel your breath is when you're angry like your heart rate is up and you breathe your breath catches uh, there's always that there's that's called chungu kwako where you just feel like <gasps> exactly you know it's like you're choking or something so breathing plays an important role in helping yourself calm down sure for sure I mean you know if you go on google and you type in benefits of breathing, you'll find hundreds of studies. And the, the process we teach on the Art of Living Youth Program and Children Program is very well researched by Harvard, by Yale, by top universities, top uh, bodies in the world, uh, discussing how this benefits the body, uh, psycholo the mind psychologically and the body. So one, one benefit is the cortisol levels decrease. Mm -hmm. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So when they took uh, tests of the cortisol levels of participants who had done the breathing, their cortisol levels had decreased. So mm. understanding how to, you know, deal with your emotions, learning this process is a very important education. Mm. And that's what I was teaching on these programs. And they're globally renowned. It's a standardized program uh, where the art of living is present in 185 countries around the world That's wonderful. and uh, we have 30,000 volunteer teachers who go oh. out and give their time not That's only amazing. me hundreds yeah. of thousands of them are doing amazing work that really shows a lot of dedication and the impact just itself because not as many people will be doing it if it wasn't something that can transform someone's life for sure and you know breathing is recommended for when you're having a panic attack anxiety they recommend that you take a breath and then you can react to the situation. So there is a value in that, especially with the younger kids. Because as we've shared, kids sometimes don't have an outlet or people no. don't have an outlet. So when you provide a safe space, because once you create a room, maybe an hour, just relax, breathe, let loose, and then it can even increase productivity. So those are things that you've noticed through your years of uh, doing the programs. Yes, and the process is known as the sky breath technique. 
it's a rhythmic breathing process like how you go to the gym you know you you can't expect results in a day and say hey i lost 10 kg <laughs> from going i wish we could but it's yeah. not like that right <laughs> it's so really nice. you know like with the breathing you're taking it's like taking your breath through a rhythmic exercise so you learn how to regulate the emotion like anger it doesn't stay with you for so long what i noticed with myself was i get angry but when i do the time between i'm angry and i feel anger is less so ah. it's not three weeks of holding on like, to something. I'm just so frustrated said. by someone. Yeah, and okay. every day somebody could trigger you, right? Every That's day true. somebody could say something that makes you feel unhappy. So we're not learning as a society how to be happy again, That's how to true. let go of that emotion of anger. And we're always blaming people for what they're doing. I'm not talking about abuse or I'm just talking in a general, very, uh, you know, uh, normal dynamic that happens yeah. in work or at home and nobody can say they're not facing it and everyone does you know yeah. life has frustrations where even on your way as you're commuting from one place to another yes. you can just come across someone who makes you angry or frustrated and so many people are carrying anger from even years back as we've talked about from the childhood Someone can have trauma from their childhood and they carry it on and it affects their relationships, their work life, yes. their social life. So how can we deal with that? First of all, how can we know that my anger is rooted in this particular experience and then address that issue so that you release your anger and become happier? Yeah, so you know, I, I'll give you a very simple example. Something somebody said 10 years ago to you. For example, if somebody said to me, Nemo, you know, uh, you're... You're dumb, let's say, okay? And I come back in front of that person 10, days, 10 years later, am I going to see that person or am I going to remember the insult <laughs> that I was given? I'm going to remember the insult, right? Yeah, true. So it's a trauma that you carry, whether it's a abuse that you faced or humiliation that you faced or, uh, you know, someone projecting their anger on you. At least today we have terms for them. Yeah. Before we never even had a terminology where we could categorize any of these mental health issues. So if you look at it from a psychological per a perspective, you see that your trauma is carried forward. So your cells carry that impression. I know, you know, they say if, if, you're sm if you smile, like you're smiling now, yeah. every muscle in your, bo in your face is moving. Is moving, moving yeah. Right? True. So in the same way, your emotions also have that imprint on your body on your mind and like memory you know you remember things you remember the good things and the bad things so if i gave you 10 compliments and one insult what will you hold on to the insult there you go and i've had the experience where i was dressed so well and this one guy said umeva nini <laughs> and i carry that forth and you forget all the other compliments so it's something that it's a response that we all have yes and it's natural i would say but the way to deal with it, like I said, you have a, a breathing process which was developed called the Sky Breath through the Art of Living programs that I'm teaching. And I'm seeing results in the youth. You know, some of them are coming out of drug addiction. They're coming out of crime. They're coming out of, uh, you know, depression. And why? Because, you know, it's a very easy breathing process that you do 20 minutes a day. It's free. It, it's like exercising your breath because we know the breath is connected to emotion now, like yeah. you explained, through anger. Yes. So every emotion is connected to your breath. And the more we learn to work with our breath, the more we're able to handle our emotion. And you see, this is something that it's a lesson that is vital and it's natural, but it hasn't been communicated or taught. No. So the fact that you're able to communicate this to even young kids, it helps them through their life to understand that at some point your boss will frustrate you yes. and you need to just step aside for five minutes, breathe and come back and handle the situation. So in, in um, line with that, how can we also identify our triggers? Because as we've said, sometimes it's just a traumatic response. Huh. Someone beat you up when you were a kid and when you see them, you just flinch naturally. For sure. Y or they said something and you carry that forth. So maybe you've dealt with everything, but once you're in the presence of that trigger, once you're in the presence of that person or even a scent or just a flashback of something, how can we deal with the triggers such that even once you're healed, it does not trigger the same response that you had? 
You know, it takes time, first I would say that. It's not an easy uh, part to let go of any kind of trauma, even if it's a small criticism somebody gave you. So that's why I, I want to say, one, the breathing helps. Two, you know, uh, exercising, moving your body. Three, going out in nature, doing something that's, you know, out of your normal day-to-day -day routine. And four, communicating, communicating and expressing. You could find just one person that you trust, a friend or a family member or even just a colleague and, and sit. And the other thing is that society needs to change the narrative. We cannot judge or label people who are facing mental health issues. Because I'd like to tell you, you know, depression is such a thing. It's such a emotion. It's more than an emotion. It's a, it's a psych psychologically debilitating process that can happen in anybody at any time for no reason. And, you know, you could be normally going about your day, but you're, you know, you, you don't feel good from inside but you're not able to express that to somebody. You're not able to say. And generally, people who are going through such events, like you are saying, you're not able to share that. So I, I, I'd like two ways for this solution. One is we have a more listening society. Somebody, you take time to look around you to see people who can, you can you know, sit with maybe for 10 minutes who don't feel so happy, who don't look so good. Just sit with them. You never know just you providing a listening ear can help them. That's one simple solution, you know. And the second is learning to regulate your emotions. Mm. Yeah. Now through the breath work and the meditation. Yeah. And so I'm okay. acknowledging that these are difficult processes, you know. Yeah. Depression, suicide, anger, anxiety, dealing with the world around you. Imagine what our youth are facing. Mm. And then there is this perfect ideal you have on Instagram of somebody who's got the best life yeah. and you in your home without even having, you know, 1% of what, yeah. That's so this true. idea of perfectionism is creating a lot of anger amongst children and, yeah. youth, and even adults. You know? That's true. And I like that you've said that because it adds value to our conversation that we were talking about last week about dealing with anxiety and uh, the the people who are here, the guests that we had, also shared the same opinion. Once you're active, once you exercise and you have a way of channeling that, the, the emotions, then it really helps you sort out and deal with them. Yes. So I want to also talk about the value of self-awareness because people have issues. I find that, especially nowadays, when I go on social media, I find that people project a lot of their issues without really understanding that this comes from within this comes from a certain aspect of my life so what is the value of self-awareness and how can we get to a place where we really understand the root cause of our issues and address them from there you know it's a journey and that journey starts with you understanding that you may have an anger issue you may be in uh, having resentment towards somebody it's important that's the first step of self-awareness the second is to go into some kind of, uh, you know, reflection or meditation. Uh, like I've taught hundreds in, of youth and children, and they're finding it helps them. You know, closing your eyes for 10 minutes and just going into observing your breath and going into that space, it's important to give yourself that time. Because you don't need to invest all your time outside. We've been taught that, right? Yeah. We have to work, we have to achieve, we have to be successful, great. But to get to that, you shouldn't lose your health in the process. And we're doing that. We're losing our health because we don't have time to eat, you know, nutritious, healthy food. Yeah. We need a quick fix. We're quickly on Instagram. We just, without even looking at the food, you know, the, the spoon is going into <laughs> our <laughs> mouth. You yeah. need to finish and just get back to work or whatever you were doing. But just 20 minutes of your time investing in yourself. And it sounds, I don't think it sounds out there anymore. Before I would say maybe people would be very skeptical or labeling, why meditation? Why is <laughs> she saying, because yeah. she's Indian. It's not like that. No, I think it's very accepted now. People do like, uh, you know, having a way of reflection, whether it's prayer or whether it's meditation, you can call it any of the two, you know, and closing your eyes and going within to take that time gives you more time to do other things out there. Yeah. yeah. And I like that you say that because it's really an, an individual battle. Like each of us are unique because our experiences, our history is all unique to us. So 
So once you can reflect and go within yourself, then it's very easy to identify. I may have this trauma because of this. Yes. Let me let me give you an example. This is not like a bad trauma, but I find myself buying shoes that are sparkly mm. every single time. I'll just spot something that shines and I'm like, I need it without even understanding <laughs> why. So once I reflected on it, yeah. I remembered an instance where I was younger and my mom couldn't afford because, you know, she was prioritizing every mm. other thing and we had to travel. And I saw shoes that were sparkling as a kid and I cried because I wanted them. But she couldn't get them at that point. Right. So I carried that trauma and I was like, now I have to fill the void of the sparkly shoes that I didn't <laughs> get as a kid. <laughs> so you see, traumas like that, they can be good or bad. Yes. But we have to look within for us to understand why am I acting a certain way or why am I reacting this way. So would you also say this cuts across relationships because sometimes even maybe our reactions in certain past relationships can affect our current relationships or the fact that someone broke your heart five years ago because yes. I've had this this theory there's this common uh, perception that people especially men they'll get hurt broken once and they close off and they think every other partner they meet is the same way so what is the value of really reflecting on even issues such as that in your relationships in your work life before you move on to the next situation you know there are so many aspects to a relationship that make it work i think you know that yeah as we grow older we see that either they become they they become more complex or you can simplify them you know yeah and unfortunately we haven't had that conversation amongst us like let's say I sit with my partner and I say okay this is the issue can we deal with it it normally becomes you know like a like a mountain uh, bef before you can deal you with it. Address it yeah yeah so identifying triggers from your past definitely help you to bring in a fresh perspective into your relationship but it's not easy Otherwise, we would have all done it. Yeah. <laughs> because we all want to be happy, right? True. So something like your father said or your mother said or your aunt said or your uncle said or even a bully in the school said affected the way you looked at something right now. And everybody's faced that. That is It's an impression you carried in the mind from your past to your present. So learning how to let go of the past and knowing that it's the past you can't change it is a very important point. And that's what we we teach on our program we train our kids you know like the past is the past i can't go back can you go back no, 10 years can't. from now you can even go back to yesterday there and change you go. what happened and life is moving ahead right true so the breath is an important aspect in that it helps to release those impressions from the past yeah and then identifying those triggers you know identifying that i have this generational trauma Maybe my father faced it and my forefathers faced it and now my father passed it on to me and I may pass it on to my child. But I want to be self-aware about it now, you know. Yeah. I don't want to pass it on to my child. So that's why I said take your step towards emotional health because it will help your children in the future and help you. But it's an individual journey. It's I can say it. individual journey. But you have to do it. <laughs> right. And you see, that's an aspect of also breaking generational curses. Yeah. Because once a habit has been carried forth from one generation th to the next, you have to decide, I'm going to be different. Yeah. And there's also the aspect of detaching the person from the, the action. Correct. Understanding that sometimes, even the bullies, sometimes they were dealing with so much at home yes. and they didn't have a channel to project all that. So they could have found you or I and they found us to be vulnerable yes. and they're like okay <laughs> now this is the weak one we're going to <laughs> zone all our projections on this person so how can we as we're getting older how can we detach and say that perhaps my mom was dealing with this or my father was dealing with some challenge at work and that's why he reacted a certain way so that it can help us also forgive and release all the past frustration I think you've said it you know <laughs> forgiving yeah and letting go and I, as I mentioned, that's why, you know, uh, counselors are there. How many of us have access to mental health resources? Very few. And what is available is also very expensive. Yeah. And that's why I came forward to take the programs, you know. I mm. realize mental health resources and access to those resources or information that I need to help myself is not easily available. That's true. So reaching for help is important. Having that conversation with yourself first and forgiveness is a journey. 
it's never easy. That You're going true. to take your time with it. Yeah. But one thing I can say for sure is the breathing, the sky breathing I did, it helped me. It really helped. So I want to share that with the wo with <laughs> with Kenya, you know. Please. Yeah, like and I like that I totally agree with you because I've seen from very many different cultures. Even if I look at there's this book that's called Ikigai and it's rooted in Japanese culture yeah. and they have the same the breathing, the diet, the philosophy of life, all of that affects the quality of life. Yes. And as we were sharing, you know, our parents and the older generations had less stress. Yes. Or perhaps the, the, the lifestyle was much healthier because they were outside in nature, the food was healthier. But we are dealing with a lot, but we're also not getting the nutrition that helps us pro produce the, the right hormones. Because now we have all these toxic hormones and everything without the balance in our system. So what is the value of also prioritizing our health and about the meals and the diet that we have? You know, uh, the diet plays such an important role. Like how many of us are eat, we, you know, in Kenya, we're so lucky in our country, we have abundance of vegetables and fruits. Yeah. The same fruits and vegetables cost so much money in another country, you know? That so is true. Are we, are we, nu are we having nutritionally, uh, high uh, energy foods like for example you know pumpkin is very nutritionally good for you uh, all these kind of foods that we have available here like spinach and kale or sukuma is brilliant for your your body system yeah. who said it wasn't your forefathers lived on it and they lived a long life and i was telling you the same thing i don't know yeah. if we'll reach there <laughs> because we have processed foods and fast the food chemicals and, and yeah, everything everything is now and then the other thing i i want to share is you know we're losing that ability to have an access to a network of family yeah it's breaking true. down you know, before your, you know, our g grandfather or great grandfather had a network of people around him yeah. who would help when there was a family problem. And now you don't have that same network. That's so are really we losing our culture in the process too? Yeah. You know? And you know the world, because of the digital era, people are more online. They'll spend their times on their phones as opposed to talking to their family and friends. So I want to go on our Facebook where we asked, how are you dealing with your mental health issues? Do you understand what you're having? Yes. And how are you addressing the root cause of the issues? So I want to read some of the comments that we've had. We have some uh, Adeline who says, just watching from Westlands. Thank you so much, Sam, for watching. Isaac Nalianya says, hi, I'm watching from Butere. I think the best way is by, number one, adopting healthy sleeping patterns. Yes. Very important. Yes. And number two, we should live in protective and supportive environments and by learning to manage emotions. Thank you so much, Isaac. That really resonates with uh, our conversation. And then Peter also says, KCC Malawa, Naivasha watching. Thank you so much for everyone who's watching us. And uh, I like what uh, Isaac has said. Because number one, people are not sleeping as, yes. as long as they need to. We need to have like six to eight hours of rest. And kids, it's, it's different across every age group. Yeah. But when you look at even kids, kids are up by 5, 4.30 a.m. And they have to get ready for school. And then once they come back, they have all this homework and all this workload, they're not getting as much sleep. So what is the value of also just resting and relaxing, even on weekends, just taking time off and disconnecting from social media? What's the impact of that on our mental health? And the impact will be huge. And you need to recognize and notice that for yourself. So I don't know if it will be appropriate for me to share with you one of the breathing Please uh, for, do. for good sleep. Yeah, we can try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's known as the back of the throat breathing. Okay. And it's a very good exercise because it helps to oxygenate the system. Okay. Yeah. And I think if you try it at home, it's perfectly okay. So yeah. I'll just share with you. So I hope when you're back home, you're in a very comfortable position. You have to We're going to try more. this because, you know, it's evening. We need to relax before we go to bed. So I'll share with you, you just take your breath in through the back of your throat and out through the back of your throat. Can you do that for me? <coughs> That's it. Just keep breathing for me. Keep going. And when you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes if that's okay for you. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. I'll tell you. 
Just keep going. Okay. Now just keep your eyes closed for a second or two. Relax the breathing. And very slowly and gently relax your breathing and you can open your eyes. That's so relaxing. <laughs> I feel like I almost went to sleep. That was very relaxing actually. Because I know many people face uh, yeah. sleeping issues and you know it's a, it's a problem. And you know it's really calmed me down for a moment. I, I could see one of our camera operators who was also trying. <laughs> in case more <laughs> camera <laughs> men dance. He's fallen asleep. asleep in this. He's fallen asleep. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We are so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really good because you know people are dealing with insomnia because they're up thinking about work, their social life, even yes. social media. People spend time on social media just comparing their lives to someone yes. else who they perceive is doing better. So breathing like that really helps calm you down. Yes, and it stops the train of, of, of thought yeah. that keeps on bombarding the mind. Yeah. Because social media is a stimulation to the brain. So it's like a light bulb that goes off, mm. on. And oh. then when you can't switch it off, what do you do? You just so the breathing on. is, yes, is a way forward. You and know? how would you recommend once, let's say I'm getting ready for bed and I'm just at home, how would you recommend, should I go off social media or turn off my phone for about 30 minutes before and then do the breathing before I go to sleep? So you can lie down on your back, keep your hand on your stomach and do the back of the throat breathing 15 times. And yeah. then you can message on your Facebook uh, yeah. uh, 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 handle. I'm sure you'll get I'll many messages. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll probably text the next day and be like, oh, yeah, I passed out. Yeah, you'll get many messages. And, and I'd I really hope you like try it at home. I hope when you're watching us back home, you try this exercise. Because I know so many people, the minds are so active at night. Yeah. I need so many. You're up at 2 a.m. Yes. On Twitter, on TikTok, yes. because you can't fall asleep. So we have to distract ourselves from our phones and from television and the computers and laptops. So once you do the breathing exercises, it helps not only with sleeping, but also your mental health. And how can we also deal with that? What advice would you give someone who's probably dealing with stress from work or from school? For, for the youth, people are dealing with stress from school, the expectations from their parents, and people who are just working and the economy is, yes. you know, stressing everyone yes. out. How would you advise them to get day by day? What breathing exercises would you recommend? So I would recommend to come on our program the sky, to learn the sky breath. Do the breathing that I taught. If you're finding you're, you're not able to sleep and you've really got an issue with sleep, and I know most people do, you can do 30 times the breathing. You know, 30 times in and out and then rest. Yeah. Don't keep your phone like this and then do <laughs> the breathing and, and tell and then say it didn't work for me. <laughs> You've got to keep the phone aside. The second is to know that life has its challenges. You know, you are going to get challenges. I know there are economic, social, uh, relationship, financial. It's really big out there and it's getting worse. I don't see that. You know, wherever I'm looking, people are sharing how much they're facing, whether it's an emotional challenge or whether it's a financial challenge. I would say, you know, do something that brings you to a space where you are able to deal with it yourself. You know, something that you like doing, whether it's uh, an outdoor activity, whether it's meditation, breathing, prayer, uh, singing, listening to music, for example, that yeah. has nonviolent lyrics yes that really helps and all those facets of life which we face on a day-to-day -day basis we're able to go through them so mm. I would really like to say that this culture of giving up has become normal I think have you yeah. noticed that it's very normalized these yeah days. It, it it needs to be the narrative that we can change as a society is to building resilience yeah. I can face criticism, I can face my problems, I can be happy and smile, not by escaping or pushing things under the carpet, but by building myself emotionally yeah. and mentally and learning to manage my emotions. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think that's very well said. I was about to ask you for your parting shot, but that kind of gives us <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> some <laughs> aspect of the parting shot. So maybe you can just tell us where to find you on social media 
uh, across all platforms, maybe your contacts, and advice you'd give particularly to parents of young kids or parents of the youth or just older siblings, people who are dealing with children, how they can help nurture their mental health to avoid half of the issues that we are dealing with right now. What, what would you advise someone? And you can also share your contacts in the same breath. Yeah, so just like you said, nurturing emotional health in your child is just imp as important as the academics. Both go together. Being empathetic towards your child, listening, and developing a space where their friends and yourself can come together as parents to discuss this. Don't lose that opportunity to bring together your friends, your colleagues, to discuss how you can better this emotional quotient amongst kids, amongst youth, and don't give up as parents. Parenting is hard, <laughs> especially in today's world. So we're acknowledging it's not easy, but go for it. Give your 100%. Give time to your children. Like I said, one hour a day is really like an investment in your child because it will give them all the tools they need for their life ahead, you know, and acknowledging their emotional emotions, validating their feelings rather than putting them down, will give them a lot of strength and confidence to move through life. And of course, you know, not everything is rosy. Also giving your child a little bit of discipline, <laughs> a little bit of criticism, so they can face the world, yeah. you know. I find we, one criticism and the youths and the children are not able to deal with it. They want to lock themselves up and say, I can't deal with this my boss is so bad, I'm doing an internship and I'm always facing uh, problems. But no, we, we must have a, a narrative of building resilience, of building a happy, healthy society that yeah. can face challenges. You Thank know? you. Yeah. So where can we find you on your social media platform? Yes, so I ha the, we have a Facebook page called The Art of Living Kenya. Please like our page, comment, and uh, you can reach me there. I'll give my telephone number, 0706-581-454. Uh, and I have my X, Twitter X handle. It's uh, Namrata Shah 7. Please reach out to me. I'm happy to uh, be there to uh, have a conversation with you about mental health and share my insights on how breathing has helped me and thousands of youth in Kenya and globally. Thank you so much. Yes. I like I like everything that you've said. Thank you so much. I hope you've taken note of her contacts because you can find out if she has workshops or trainings about how you can deal with your mental issues and build resilience. That is it for today. I hope you've taken away something. In today's society, there are so many stresses and triggers. Learn how to deal with your own triggers. Do breathing exercises, meditate, and heal from within. You have to address your issues from within yourself. I'd like to thank you for sticking to Y254 TV. My name has been Cheryl Blessing and this has been the Power Talk Show. I want to appreciate every single person who's made this show a success and I want to see you next week, same time. So tune in to Power Talk, same time next week. And uh, that's it for today. Have a lovely evening. Imagine.